Hello YouTube and welcome to another image editing tutorial on 0612 TV. Today we're gonna turn this into this. Day night conversion is one of the most novel and fun effects to do. It applies both to video and photos. So yeah, let us take a look at how this is done after the break. <laughs> This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. So this is actually what inspired me to do this whole tutorial. I was actually in a little tour bus in Malaysia. And we were actually passing by this area that is actually an oil palm plantation. And well, you know what it generally looks like. Except the difference is that in this area, the oil palms were actually wilted. This is not something you see very often. It actually looks really creepy even in the day. We were actually talking among ourselves about how creepy this would be at night. And that was what actually gave me the idea. I was like, perhaps I can do day-night conversion on this photo and we will actually get a feel of what it will be like at night. But enough of all this backstory, let us jump right in to the tutorial proper. So day-night conversion. Now if you remember about a year and a half ago, I actually did a little tutorial called the Creepy Atmosphere Vlog. In that video, I actually roughly covered some concepts behind day-night conversion, but I didn't go into a whole lot of detail. So today, I'm going to take this from the ground up and well, we'll see how it goes. The first step to actually performing a good day-night conversion color grade is to actually take a photo that is suitable for this operation. Now imagine this, if I were to actually take a photo with the sky blown out, what's going to happen is it's never going to look right when I apply the day-night conversion effect. Why is that so? Well, at night, the sky is never bright enough to blow out your sensor. Seeing as that blowing out actually refers to information being lost because it's too bright for the sensor to capture, there is actually no way to bring back that detail when you actually reduce the brightness. And seeing as that that is something that never happens at night, what this means is that you will not get a convincing effect. And that is why if you're taking a picture or if you're taking video and your intention is to do day-night conversion to that, you want to be very careful to not blow out any highlights. Obviously, it is always optimal to, you know, not have anything blown out, not have anything crushed. But with, you know, our normal run-of-the-mill cameras, that might not always be an option. However, in this case, it is vitally important to not actually have any blown out highlights even if you actually have to sacrifice some of the darker colors and let it get crushed to black. So do bear that in mind when you're actually shooting, well, your original photos or footage. So once you've gotten your original footage or picture, go ahead and pop that into your editor. The first thing you actually want to do is to go to hue and saturation and bring down the saturation. Why? Because at night when it's dark, it's actually harder to perceive colors. You don't actually have to bring down the saturation all the way, something like you know between 20 to 50 percent should be quite a good estimate of where we want to be then go ahead and go to the levels tool and actually bring down the overall brightness one of the things i like to do when i'm performing a day night conversion is i actually like to bring the gamma up this of course reduces the contrast of the image it actually makes everything appear kind of equally bright and that is something i feel happens when it's dark there tends to be less distinction between what's bright and what's dark. Everything feels roughly, you know, equal brightness. As you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison, the one with raised gamma actually looks kind of more convincing. How far you want to go, of course, depends on your picture as well as, you know, the feel you want to create. So yeah, do experiment both with the reduction of the brightness as well as the actual gamma change. Once you're satisfied with that, go ahead and click OK out of that dialog box. Now, this is actually already pretty good. It feels kind of nightish, but if you want to take this one step further, what you can do is you can actually tint the entire image. You realize most night shots tend to be bluish or purplish. So go ahead and actually pop into a color balance tool. Or if you're adventurous, go ahead and use a levels tool on a particular channel. Go ahead and tweak things until the image actually has an overall tinge of some sort. Personally, I prefer to go a little bit towards the purple side of things. Though, of course, a completely blue kind of look also works. So there, we have, well, an image that has been transformed from a daytime image to a nighttime image. Of course, this is really just the first step of the many things you can do. If you want to finesse this further like I did, 
actually dropped a little moon in the corner and a moon actually you know kind of lights things up right so what i've done is i've actually taken the original image layered it over tweaked its transparency settings somewhat and then basically started to subtly paint in some areas that should have been lit by the moon this also creates an illusion of shadows cast by all the trees well there you have it that is a little day night conversion trickery for you there are a whole lot of things you can do and a lot of things you can actually experiment with and tweak depending on the look and feel you're going for so don't be afraid to experiment well once again that's all there is for this episode if you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow my official Twitter account at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612tv.